The biggest challenge beginners face while creating a material in Blender is that they don't know when to use which node. Here is an overview of most commonly used shading nodes, so you can quickly start creating great materials. This is the second part of this video. You can watch the first part up here or you can also find the link in the description. So let's continue where we left off. Let's start with a color amp node. This node can be used for a variety of tasks such as converting color values to grayscale, adjusting contrast, creating custom color gradients and so on. Using these points we can adjust the blacks and the whites of an image. Or we can set a color for these points. You can use these icons to add or remove a point or simply control click where you want to create a point. We have some cool options here like we can flip the ramp, we can distribute the points from left to right or we can distribute them evenly. We can change the color mode here and choose the interpolation types. This position value can be useful when you want to place a point on a specific location and also for animation. If you have many points close to each other, you can use this icon to select the points. Next we have a math node. We can use this node to perform all kinds of math operations. But there are only a few that are used most commonly, like these ones. For example, if you select multiply, we can multiply the current value with this value. Or if we select subtract, we can subtract this value and so on. Next we have a map range node. We can use this node to select a specific area from a range by using from min and max values and map that to a new range by using two min and max values. You can enable or disable clamp and select the interpolation type. You can perform the same operation for vectors also. Next we have RGB to black and white node which will turn your textures into grayscale images. Next we have a set of really useful nodes the separate and the combined nodes. We can use a separate XYZ node to separate each axis of a vector and we can access them individually and we can use the combine XYZ node to combine it back to a vector. We can do same with the separate and the combined color nodes. The only difference is that we can select a color mode here. We can use mix color node to mix two colors or textures. By default, the mode is set to mix which means if we set the factor to 0, it will only use the A input and if we set the factor to 1, it will only use the B input. Setting the factor in between will average the two values. We can choose a different type of blending mode. If you want to read about blending modes in detail, I'll put a link in the description. For example, if we select multiply, we can use the darker values from the B input to darken the values of A input and we can adjust the strength of the effect by using the factor value. This node has three modes. In float mode, you only get a factor value to mix between two values. In vector mode, we have two types of factor. Uniform option will give you the regular factor value and in non-uniform, we can adjust the factor for each axis separately. We can use the brightness contrast node to adjust the brightness and the contrast of our image. Similarly, we can use the gamma node to adjust the gamma. Then we have a hue saturation value node, which is a really useful one. You can adjust the hue, saturation and value of an image from this node and you can use the factor value to control the strength of the effect. Next we have an invert color node that allows us to invert any texture or color. And finally we have RGB curves node. It is similar to the float curve node which we looked at except it's made for colors. You can select individual channels from here. Now let's look at some vector nodes. First we have a mapping node. We can use this node to transform, rotate or scale our textures by applying the transformation on the coordinates. Then we have a vector math node. We can use it to perform math operations on vectors. For example multiply. We can take the current value and multiply it by a given value. There are many ways you can use this node. One way would be if we move this down and connect the mapping node to the original checker texture then duplicate this texture and connect our vector math node to it. Then we merge both textures together and set the mode to multiply and factor to 1. We can create a new texture while still be able to transform or rotate the texture using the mapping node at once. We can use a bump node to create an illusion of detail on the surface of our model by using a black and white texture. You can set the maximum distance for the bump and adjust the overall strength of the effect from here. We can use a normal map if we have a normal texture. This will give you better results in comparison to bump. You can adjust the strength and you can also change the normal space. Then we have a displacement node. We can use it to add actual displacement on our geometry using a black and white texture. We connect it directly in the material output node instead of shadow node. If you see we have some detail but the displacement is not actually working right now. For that we need to go into material settings. 
and change the displacement type from bump only to displacement and bump. Now we have actual displacement working. We can set the scale of the displacement from here and the mid value and also the space. Now the most important category, the shader nodes. First we have the principal BSDF shader which is the most versatile shader. You can use it to create any kind of surface. Base color will allow you to set the color of the object. Metallic value will make the object look like a metal. You can increase the roughness or make it more glossy. Then we have the IOR value, which is basically how much the light bends when it passes through an object. To see it better, let's first turn the transmission rate to one. Now, if you change the IOR value, you can see the effect of this. If we set it to one, the light will not bend at all and it will be completely see-through. You can see some examples of IR here. Next we have alpha. We can use alpha to mask areas of our geometry. Like in this example, we have the image of a leaf applied on a plane, but if we connect alpha to the alpha value of our shader, all the areas that are black in alpha will be transparent. Next we have subsurface, which is an advanced topic, but for an overview, we use it to create like you see in skin or leaves. Next we have specular, Using this, we can change the color of the primary reflection. We can adjust the IOR for this, and we can adjust these values if you want an isotopic reflections. We will not cover coat and sheen in this video. Lastly, we have emission. We can use it to make any object glow. But if you want to make an object glow and you don't want to use any other properties, you can simply use an emission node, which is specifically made for this task. You can set the strength of the emission and the color. Next, we have a glass PSDF shader, which will by default turn an object into glass. You can increase or reduce the roughness of it by using this value, and you can also adjust the IOR value. If you want, you can also give it a tint. Similar to this, we have glossy BSDF to make glossy surfaces. You can increase or reduce the roughness and isotopy if you want an isotopic reflections. You can adjust the rotation of the reflections and you can also set a custom color. But these shaders are not meant to be used alone. So to mix them, we can use an add shader node. We can use this node to basically merge any two shaders, but we don't have much control here. For better control, we can use mix shader node. It is similar to the add shader node, except we have this factor value here, which we can use to control the amount of blend and we can also plug in a texture here. We also have shader nodes that are not made for surfaces like principal volume node. We need to connect it in the volume input instead of surface input of material output node and it will turn your geometry into volume. You can adjust the density value to make it more or less dense or give it a color. We also have an isotopy value here. We can give it some emission and set a color for the emission. Black body intensity will give you the black body emission for effects like fire or explosions and you can increase or decrease the temperature using the temperature value. A simplified version of this node is volume scatter node, which only has density, color and an isotopy value.